when we talk about animation, the first thing people tend to comment on is the visuals. But as with all cinema, the visuals are enhanced through sound design. In fact, changing the sound design can fundamentally change the entire feel of a scene. So today I want to briefly look at sound design. Now, when it comes to animated work, it's always been pretty solid and innovative in regards to soundscapes. But in today's world, there's one show that really stands apart, as it's totally reliant on visuals and sound design. Another masterpiece from Gendy Tartakovsky. Everything I want to do, I want to do different, that sounds different from the last project, from art, storytelling, everything. You know, in researching Primal, it's so clear that they had a guiding principle from the very start that set the tone for the project. And that was the title. You know, like everything else with this show, you want it to be raw and, and primal. Whoa, 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 whoa. This one isn't about action. Let's just take a breath. So let's just talk about sound design for a second. It's an incredibly creative and challenging field. It combines a huge array of people from location audio, boom operators, foley artists, sound engineers, and even branches into the score at times. You know, you may not know this, but usually about 90% of sound you hear while watching a feature or a TV series has been added later. Animation is no different. The audio has to be created from scratch to support a world that you're in. Now, some worlds have established sounds, things we would expect to hear paired with a location or even an action, like this old classic. Hey, just hang on. Hello, hello, testing, testing. And anyone who works in audio can tell you that's just not how microphones work. But we as an audience expect it now because we've been shown so often. Now, how do you create a sound for something that just doesn't exist? Well, very often that's grounded in the real world. <laughs> Using audio correctly can not only reinforce where you are, who's there, but it can also help us focus on specific elements as they are revealed. You know, sound can usually motivate the pace of a scene, and more than that, it really reinforces the subconscious connection that we share to what we're seeing. Gendy has always been very successful in how he uses sound, especially when he chooses to let a scene breathe. In fact, the inspiration for Primal came out of these moments. And people kept saying, oh, I love the sequences where there was no dialogue, right? And then it kind of hit me like, wow, could I do an actual half hour show with made up of just those sequences, right? And then, well, what kind of story can facilitate that? So it feels natural, it doesn't feel forced, right? And all of a sudden I remembered, oh yeah, I had that, uh, that little caveman boy and dinosaur idea. And... Uh, well, let me see if I could do it. And so I started just to do a one storyboard pilot, basically, to see if I could do an episode, right? You could talk about anyone when you look at sound design, but really I feel like Andy is so unique. So let's have a look at his process, starting with the storyboards. Oh, he's got a tooth dagger. <laughs> Another painful scream. This one watches, all the kids watch too from that scream. It's jostling around, trying to get rid of him, trying to get rid of him. Did you notice something? And then he spins around, brings up into camera. It, it, he antics back and then... He's acting out all the action through sound effects. My job is to take the story and communicate it the way we intend it to be. Anything that I do, usually, I, um, I, I hear it in my head because it's such a big part of storytelling. 
and so I'll hear maybe a rhythm. Obviously, I don't, I'm not musical, so I don't hear the specific themes or whatever, but I do hear the structure of it, the pacing. That's very important. Like when I board it, you know, I'm either going dun 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 dun, dun right, or whatever, you know, and it it kind of it kind of drives it, and it gives me a really good basis. And so my pitches are two time; they're at 22 minutes. And so when you watch the pitch, you could really get a sense of the show, you know. And uh, some stuff I have to explain, obviously, but a lot of it I try to do with sound effects. And that's when Gendy starts from frame one just as any of us would when we're kids. And it's like <laughs> And he'll take you through the sound and the music. And while it could sound pretentious with me describing how this goes, even though he's going You know, he gives us a very, you know, exact idea of what he's feeling and the dynamics and the pacing and all this without ever citing specific music that would box us into a corner. And that's what's really wonderful. It may take us a few swings to find what the it actually is, but we're still always working from that original conversation, which is something that is very rare in filmmaking and storytelling and, and, and you know commissioned art these days. Here's the thing. Storyboards are the backbone of animation, and as an audience, sound can dictate more of our understanding of a location or action than just what we're seeing. Knowing what sound effects to use, how loud and how long they should be, will vastly change what you create. And having that idea early really helps to solidify and construct your vision. And being able to communicate that is super important. You want to meet people who understand your sens sensibility. And especially with sound effects, like when I go whoop, like, you know, or, or anything, Joel knows what I'm talking about. So I don't have to <laughs> spend all this time explaining what specific Hanna-Barbera sound effect or something that I mean to. We have the same language and it makes just with music, just with design, just with color, just with writing. You want to surround yourself with people who understand your sensibility and it made my life uh, so much, so much easier. Now, when you consider a story like Primal has no verbal dialogue, once you strip away the radio play, what you're left with is a strong visual story. But that story wouldn't work without the right sounds. And not just the world, but the creatures that live there. Especially if you're trying to display a dinosaur's emotion. She really comes alive with all the sound effects and the emoting. Your ability to vocalize sounds is amazing because Gendy will, like Tyler was expressing with music, uh, Gendy does the same with me and he'll vocalize monster sounds and little sounds and it actually just, you immediately know that what he wants uh, from you. So 99% of the time, he's okay with pretty much everything I deliver. It's that 1% that I end up pulling my hair out, trying to just, <laughs> you know, like with, uh, I think it was uh, Night Feeder, you locked on to a sound. And I only had one example of that sound. And it was like two days later, I finally figured out that dragging a uh, piece of styrofoam on a large piece of wet glass was the sound that ended up being the Night Feeder screaming. <laughs> No, it's always a challenge, but it's, it's a rewarding challenge. I try to give myself that selfishly that situation where <laughs> everywhere I go, I'm fans of the people that I work with and I can't wait to see what they do. As I've talked about in my previous video, Gendy has this great ability to pace his stories, going from very quiet and still to suddenly an explosion of action. And part of that comes from reacting to what we see daily. And take your time. You watch the speed of everything now is so fast and it's so in your face that this is complete opposite of that. These moments of quiet cam help a few things. They help us set the scene, understand where we are and what we should be feeling. But they also break up the visceral action. So when it does hit, it hits harder. It created a different experience. 
Mm-hmm. You know, and for me, like I've always wanted to do things that you create a feel, a tone that's unique to what I do. And you want to have a signature. And, uh, and so it felt very much uh, into what I was doing. What I like a lot from the sound design on Primal is that the audio is matched to an image a lot. And not just what's happening visually, but the emotion of the scene. Take the mammoth separated in the snowstorm. The music is faded out and we're left with the mammoth's call to their lost herd. Or even when Spear is getting irritated with Fang and the buildup of noise and tension. And then sudden silence. Or when Spear is massacring the ape men, we shift away from the drums and each punch is weighed with disturbing audible violence. Even as it cuts between characters, we're taken closer in by the simple change of something as simple as how rain sounds pattering off their skin. Sound can be used to give the protagonists time to react to danger that they might face. And all these sounds are based in some level of reality that we can pull from our own lives. When you use sounds gathered in the outside world, the real world, and you bring them into a science fiction film, you get the credibility of those sounds to sell to the audience the reality of what's really just a very uh, fantastic world. If you think about your own life, how much of the crucial interactions and moments happen against that setting? You know, as much as Gendy draws from what he's been influenced by, he also pulls from his personal experiences as well. There were camels, camel rides. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if you've ever been around a camel really close, but they're like alien creatures, you know. And we walked up to this uh, camel, and it just goes, you know, made this crazy noise. Mm -hmm. And you get this amazing feeling about it. And and I wanted to capture it. Like, I never forgot it about how I felt. And I was like, oh, if if I can somehow bottle that and and communicate it to an audience would be incredible. You know, so I think there's an element to that, too. Primal takes the basis of sound design to a whole new level and effectively allows the sound to be a huge engaging factor as part of the story. Once we filled it in with sound effects and with music and him yelling and grunting a little bit, um, you don't miss it at all. And so it's been really positive. And what's the big thing that's been a surprise is how engaging it is without dialogue. Because yeah. if you watch a normal TV show, you could like text and stuff, and you, it's a radio show for the most part, and right. you can listen to it and still follow along. With this show, if you don't watch it, you miss everything. You miss everything, yeah. yeah. And so people are just like engaged, and in the screenings, they're just frozen. And you know, that's so true. Often we rely on dialogue to explain everything for us. But behind all that, there is a possibility to use natural sounds to underscore certain emotions the character might be feeling, like nervousness, unease, or even incompetence. Thank you, Stacy. You know, it's not real what we do. It's not natural. It's a caricature of, of the real world. Yeah, it's, a, it's a form of music where you pick out sounds for a certain emotional purpose string them together and blend them together to have an effect on the audience. It's often an overlooked element of production, but already having a clear idea of what you'd like the soundscape of your work to be will allow you to figure out its pace and amplify the emotions you want to portray in a scene. In this case, a little says a lot. Okay, let's do it again. Hey everyone, I just want to say thank you so much for watching again. If you haven't seen Primal, which I'm sure you have if you're watching this, do check it out. It is an experience unlike anything else. 
I just want to super thank all the Patreons. These guys are the best and again, really, really appreciate all the support that you're giving me. So thank you so much. And I also want to thank everyone in the Discord. You guys are the best or anyone else who's ever reached out through messages or anything to get in touch. It's really gratifying and super interesting to get to know every one of you. But yeah, thank you so much for watching.